Hi folks and welcome to today's webinar with Irish Rugby. Today we're actually focusing on you know a hugely important issue within our game and within all sport is you know keeping children and young players active and how can we especially do that and counteract some of the dropout as they move from youth into adult participation. Um, my name is Colin Finnegan, I'm the Children and Youth Development Manager with Irish Rugby, so I'll be kind of guiding you through some of the stuff today. We have a host of experts coming in, we've Colin O'Hare from Leinster Rugby, Molly Byrne from the IRFU Youth Council, and Jamie Turkington is Coach Development Manager with Irish Rugby. Um, look, it's it's a hugely important subject, so we're not going to wait too long. Just a couple of things I want to draw your eye to before we get started. Hugely important as we start to get back on pitches is to make sure that we're adhering to all current guidelines in your jurisdiction. So make sure it's incumbent on you to understand your local jurisdiction governmental guidelines and, and make sure then that we're making it a fun and enjoyable experience. Uh, some of the key things we've touched on in other webinars is why players are returning. So understand your players why, and then that will allow you to go and uh, address you know, your sessions and, and manage what you're going to do in this time. I'm, I'm delighted to go and bring in the first of our experts. Um, I'm going to bring in Colin O'Hare. Um, Colin, how's things with you? Great, Colin. Uh, thanks for having me in. Great to have you. No, look, really, really appreciate you, you coming on board. Again, uh, why we're here to have a look at that, uh, obviously the player transition from uh, the youth to adult side of things, massively, massively important in terms of obviously looking at uh, the fall off and the drop off rates. That's, this is one of the areas that um, it's, 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 it's a fact that you do see a lot of uh, players moving on to, to, um, to different spheres and that. So we're going to sort of hone in on that area and have a good uh, chat on it. Um, and again, a lot of interesting thoughts on it. Um, a lot of this stuff you'll already probably talked about within your club with it, uh, regards to each other and having those chats over the years. So look, if we can get our minds together and come up with a few strategies going forward, um, that for me would be success. Um, so again, um, obviously uh, in terms of um, why, why people uh, play sport, why people uh, play rugby, it's because uh, we love it, uh, they, they love it. Um, it's about that love uh, for, for the game. Um, which again is, is is a massive driver and a massive why um, uh, for, for for the players. Just a quick uh, snapshot: you can see the famous Brian O'Driscoll in terms of um, again uh, a, a pathway. So again, every player has a pathway within the club, within the school. And if you if you just take Brian for example, you can see how he again went from uh, school land to uh, uh, university land, club land, obviously then to uh, the province side of things and then international. Now remember, all our players, um, even you as a coach, if you, if, if you did play as well, we, we, uh, we all have a unique uh, pathway uh, and transition from, from our club or school uh, to, to uni um, and, 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 to, and, and obviously to the club. So it's important to understand um, and try and see yourself as that 17, 18 year old transition uh, uh, to that. So what are the implications and, and, and the factors that we need to, 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 to look at? So again, obviously, this is this is <clears throat> something we all know in terms of uh, why why do players want to play? Um, obviously, from a fun and enjoyment point of view, that has to be paramount. That is key for for us all. In terms of uh, fun and enjoyment, obviously, an opportunity to develop, progress, and uh, challenge themselves. Now, every single player that that you coach has an intrinsic motivation. Obviously, yes, firstly, it's for for a fun and enjoyment point of view. But it could be a, a sense, for, for example, maybe they're there to develop themselves physically, that maybe um, they love exercising, they want to get into good shape, especially that late teens, um, early 20s, they want to, again, they, they want to uh, challenge their own bodies, um, progress and challenge themselves in, in terms of being a better player, um, being a better person around the social sphere. Um, obviously, as well, the appropriate training and game experiences. Um, again, it's, it's very important to have an understanding that as the player progresses up through the state, different stages within your club um, and within, uh, within the, uh, the, the coaching sphere, it's important that we're, again, as coaches, that we're delivering and uh, challenge the players that they're getting a good experience and that they feel that they're developing. Um, an opportunity to play and train with their peers. Again, massively important to again, at, at that stage uh, in, in, in the playing career, to sort of care more about what each other thinks in their own sphere, um, more so than uh, the, the parents. 
Um, and it's again, it's a, it's, it's a stage in their lives where you know they've, they've serious ambition to go forward in their lives, not only in uh, on the pitch but obviously off the pitch and careers and so on. And then the social connection uh, for me, it's massive. Um, everybody, no matter whether it's sport or anything in life, that everyone wants to feel part of something. And it's a great opportunity again to acknowledge that and to see how obviously we can keep those bonds um, going forward. Okay, in terms of the dropout, and we hear so many uh, car park chats and after uh, pitch session chats, after game chats about, you know, how can we keep um, players from dropping out? And there's a load, again, there's a multitude of reasons. Um, and I'm, I'm sure you've, again, if you put yourself in the, the, the shoes of that 17 year old, 18, 19 year old, uh, maybe you've gone through that yourself, something you can share, uh, you, you might share. Um, Again, within the club, within within the, within coaching committees, and on how uh, you know we, we 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 can do better in that area. So obviously, it stops being fun for for a multitude of reasons. The, the player obviously maybe developed and progressed, but the coach didn't. So in other words, maybe the coach who's been a great volunteer might be burnt out, and maybe has been working with that player and players for the last ten years has taken him up from minis, and maybe um, from a club point of view, maybe needed to freshen things up um, and, and, and didn't. Maybe it was because there was nobody else um, just to be aware of that as well. So it's very hard to get volunteers. So we're different than um, keeping the players from dropping out. The challenge is how can we keep our coaches from dropping out and helping them be the best they can be. Um, the coach didn't adapt, uh, change and innovate in line with the athletes changing needs. Again, obviously the player, especially that 17, 18, 19 year, year old now is becoming an adult. They're going to be in a situation where they could be playing with 30 year olds, 32 year olds coming to the end of their career. It's going to be a big age gap when, when, when they hit 18, 19. And obviously, um, the coach again, that they, they can adapt and that they can give the, uh, again, the, the appropriate uh, training uh, to, to the player. Uh, their friends, their peer group, as I mentioned, um, the other side of off pitch that maybe they've moved on to something or somewhere else. And that's, that's life. Um, obviously going maybe to university, moving moving abroad for a year, bit of travelling, and they're the things that you know that that's that, that's that, that, that's life. Um, another relationship, or another relationship again, maybe became more appealing. Maybe another sport, um, maybe again, maybe a bit of dating. Um, so many things there in terms of um, move ons or looking looking for other experiences. And obviously then the sports competitive structure didn't adapt as the player needs changed. Um, a couple of examples for me over the years where you would maybe have a lot of uh, 18s, 19s, 20s uh, sides entering a competition, for example, and maybe a lot of them have pulled out due to different uh, different reasons why maybe the, in terms of not being able to feel for different reasons, kids moving on, uh, not being able to recruit and so on. So. There's some of the stuff um, that you already know that we that we all talk about, um, and maybe we can come up with some ideas going forward at the end on uh, things to hone in on. So I'll hand you over to Molly. Um, if Molly wants to take the reins. Perfect. Thanks, Colly. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Molly. I'm a member of the RFU Youth Council, and uh, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about how uh, young people are as a player group. So young adults are a distinctive group because we do have the enthusiasm of younger players, but with some added maturity of more senior athletes. We're keenly interested in rugby, but we often have multiple hobbies and other commitments on the go as well. We enjoy our time with our friends and the social element of sport is really important to us. At this stage now, our bodies have developed to the point where we're physically able to meet the demands of senior rugby. And we've already established good coordination skills and we're really eager to build on those. And while maturity levels can vary, all young people at this age are in the process of trying to understand our emotions and our thoughts. We've got an increasing awareness of our own identity and we're starting to come into our own as individuals. We like to play a role in things that are important to us. And so we want to take responsibility for aspects of our life, our sport and our training. Um, but despite this increased self-awareness and purpose, we still do struggle with confidence and coaches should be aware of this. Um, and it's particularly notable at this age of progression from youth to adult rugby, where we've likely spent a long time with the same coaches and same teammates. And now we have to make that move to a new setup where there's different expectations and different challenges. 
So navigating adolescence is never easy, but I think doing it in the global pandemic is a whole other story. Everyone has experienced the challenges during this period, but it's been particularly difficult, I think, for young people who already face so much change in this time of their lives. And the impact of lockdown on our mental health can't be underestimated for this reason. The normal life pressures that we face have been compounded by the fear of COVID as well as social isolation. Like the rest of the population, we've been frustrated and lonely during this period without the access to the normal outlets we use like social networks and sports. There's increased vulnerability associated with being a young person, particularly in the age of social media. And while it's a great way to keep connected with friends during this time, it can also be a bit all consuming and impossible to escape at times. So it does have that positive and negative effect. The limited access to formal exercise during this period is something that we've all experienced. And for those who are used to the structure that sport brings, uh, this can impact their motivation and their ability to keep fit. And then all of these factors can combine to impact our self-esteem and confidence, as well as our sense of identity. And this is something that coaches and players should be aware of as we come back to rugby, especially for those in that transitionary period between youth and senior teams. We've lost over a year of our playing experience. And for a lot of people, while they've now reached the age to play with senior players, they might not be physically or emotionally ready to make that jump. So understanding the impact of COVID on young people is something that the Youth Council are really interested in. And to find out a little bit more about this, we've developed a survey for young players and volunteers to find out how they've experienced the pandemic. And using this information that we collect, we want to create a document for clubs to guide them on how best to help young people to return to sport, both safely and confidently. And after this webinar, you'll get an email with the link to the survey. So if you could encourage anyone aged 14 to 24 to complete it, it takes a maximum of 10 minutes and would go a long way to ensuring that the return to rugby is as smooth as possible for everyone. Some preliminary results of this survey do show that the pandemic has affected young people both physically and emotionally. Before the pandemic, most players were doing more than five hours of physical activity a week. But this has now dropped, with most young athletes now doing one to three hours. And as a result, 69% of players feel like they've become less fit since lockdown started. Most players that we've surveyed have reported not playing sport has had a negative impact on their mental and physical health. And their main concerns about returning to rugby are associated with injury, being too unfit or catching COVID. So for young people returning to sport and for those who are moving from youth to adult rugby, there are a number of ways that they can prepare themselves. Physically, I think it's important for them to remember that it's been over a year since they last played rugby and fitness levels, particularly rugby based, might not be what they used to be. It's really easy to pick up injuries by going hell for leather in the early stages of returning to sport. So it's important that their reintroduction to training is gradual and progressive. And their skills as well might be a little bit rusty um, compared to their new senior teammates or just from the extended period away from sport. And while this is frustrating, remaining patient with themselves will be valuable in keeping their confidence. Young athletes will likely be nervous about coming back to sport, and especially for those who are making that jump from youth to senior rugby. So understanding that this is completely normal and they're not alone in this feeling is key. If they have worries, sharing them with their coaches and their teammates can make this transitionary period much more manageable. And just these small steps can ensure that their return to rugby and this transition from youth to senior teams is as safe and enjoyable as possible. So I'll just hand over to Jamie. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Molly. And thanks, Colin, for that, that insight into our young players and our young people and some of the challenges that they've faced over the last year, but also importantly, what they want out of our sport. Um, I'm aware that there was a, a webinar last week looking at the transition of many players through to the youth game. And we'll focus today on that transition from the later age grade into the adult game and really looking at the difference and the different needs of those players as they transition through into a game where, as colleague touched on, they'll be playing with older players that have been around the adult game for a longer period of time, but also dealing with the challenges of college work, change in society for them, new, new openings, new ideas and, and offerings there. So when we go to retain our players through these different stages, there's some considerations that we need to bear in mind. And they are the social network that a club can provide for them, particularly when they move from that late teens into the adult game. What game choices are available? So you'll have some players that, that have aspirations to play higher up in the game. You'll have those that just want to play, to be physically active and socially connected with their, their peers and other players. 
the competition structure, what does it the demand of them and what does it give back in relation to what they want from the game and how often they want to compete. Coach development and that idea of ongoing learning. How much do we put into the thought process behind supporting coaches learn both formally and informally from their, their players and their co uh, club and the player aspirations? So ultimately, what are we providing as a club for the players? What do we give them back so that they can give to us as well? And ultimately, does your club have a plan for the transition of players to senior rugby and have you put thought behind it? So as we delve into it, and a lot of this has been touched on, so we'll look at primarily what coaches can do to support that transition of players into the adult game. And ultimately, the players still want fun, enjoyment and well-being. And well-being is something that's quite prominent at this moment in time in society due to what we've all been through and are going through. And as players start to return back to the game, it should be top of the list in relation to considerations for that particular cohort of players as they move from age grade rugby into the adult game and that idea of playing with their peers and maybe playing into other teams within your club. Coaches should be encouraged to continue their own learning and development. And as I mentioned earlier, that that's not necessarily from a formal perspective, but also the informal aspects and also learning from their players and what the individual players want and also what the player group wants and, and how you can best support their development. So through that, by having those conversations and building in processes, to communicate and connect with your players, you can gain understanding as, as to what their wants and demands are and what their needs are and aspirations, and ultimately maintain that player relationship with the, the game, or even better, grow it. Understand the influence of appropriate training and game time and competition has on players, but also how you as a coach connect with the players and how you put together your sessions. And a point that sits well with this is, how well are the relationships with you and other coaches and other club members within the club to identify what's most appropriate for these players as they transition from their peer group or age group into the adult game? What types of competition can be put together and what type of information can you share with other coaches to make sure that the appropriate training and game time can be put together for, for these players? So as a club, and this has to be connected with the coach as well, so they don't sit in isolation. Again, the club, you've got to ensure it's a fun, enjoyable environment for all. And that's going to be slightly different to each individual and each individual group of players as to what they want out of your club, both on and off the pitch. Ensuring social well-being and support for those young players as they, as they integrate. So that idea that they're moving into young adulthood, that they're starting to make some choices of their own, and that will be dictated but to to by the offerings that, that are available to them. Is there a process available in the club or are there personnel in the club that look at it, connecting and identifying those young players and identifying what they want, what they need from the game and how they can they can actually integrate into the club and ultimately be there as members of the club and, and be active members of that club. Does that help you identify and cater for the needs of the players? So key idea is that attention to this transition point where you've got young players that play with their peers week in, week out, to now not necessarily getting that opportunity. Do they have social needs off the pitch as well as the needs as players on the pitch? Does the club provide meaningful experiences for the players? And what I mean by this is as they are being introduced into the adult game, is there opportunity where they can play, um, whether it be train or play in competitions with their peers? whether that be under 20s, under 21s, or whatever is most appropriate. Has your club considered what that might look like for that player group? Particularly in this instance, where we've had players that haven't had a lot of training and game time together for the utmost of 12 months. So is there consideration for that in the short term for this group of players, but ultimately, is there a plan in place for that and um, moving into the future? The key area that's sometimes neglected, and we touched on the social media aspect of this, is your club proactive in the recruitment and retention of players? And is that just that your players will stay in the club? Or are you proactive in connecting with those players, identifying what their aspirations are, what their needs are, what they want out of the game? And ultimately, remember the human element. That, that tap on the shoulder, that phone call, can mean so much more to a player and helping them make the decision to join your club than rely on social media and word of mouth. So to, to wrap up and summarise, we've got to understand that all sports experience the dropout problem. But the question is, what are we going to do about it to change that or, or, to, or to hinder that or, or, or stagnate it? 
understand the reasons behind the dropout pattern. So why do players leave our sport, but ultimately why do they leave your club if that's the case? Are there things that you could do to support that? Or is it just the end of a journey for a player? But ultimately, the more we do, the more we're proactive around, the more we'll help our players stay involved in the game. Ultimately, people will stay connected and engaged with experiences and relationships, which they enjoy and meet their needs. And the more we can understand what those needs are and help foster those positive relationships, the more we'll do to retain players within our game, particularly as they transition through what can be quite a turbulent and difficult period from that age grade into the adult game. So thank you for listening. And I'll hand back to Colin. Thanks, Jamie, and thanks, Colin and Molly as well. Um, just some some fantastic insights there and, and I suppose opportunities for us to check our own learning and our understanding of what's going on. Uh, hugely important to have Molly on the call um, unless Collie and Jamie and myself are planning to do a Benjamin button and, and get younger uh, to actually understand that voice of the young person. Um, and look, it, you know, I suppose if we if we go back to that, um, you know, Molly, you've spoken about the survey. Um, it's hugely important. You know, Jamie has talk, talked about the understanding of, of the young players, but um, in, in that current survey, you can see the early early insights that are coming out. Um, and and I suppose what what would be your overriding theme um, that, that that you're seeing coming through? Yeah, so I think we've had a look at kind of some of the, the early results and we've had a, a fantastic response over 1,300 responses so far um, and it came out um, the Friday before last. So we're kind of looking to delve into that. And I think what we've seen so far is that, um, you know, the, the lockdown and the pandemic has affected young people. You know, it's, it's been a difficult time. Um, but the kind of overriding theme is that um, physically and mentally, people have struggled a little bit, but are hoping to get back to the game. And I think that they're excited to return. Some of the, the kind of uh, the things that we're looking at is, is what their activity levels were before, their enjoyment levels before, how they've kept connected with their team or with their clubs um, during lockdown and what kind of activities they've been doing um, to keep up their fitness and keep up their well-being. And then um, moving on from that, when they return to rugby, A, will they come back? Um, and and kind of be if 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 not why aren't they and if they are what they're looking forward to what their concerns might be so um there's a lot of stuff to work through at the minute but i think from what we found it's just that that would re that reduced physical activity during those initial stages and uh, they're aiming to come back hopefully um but that they need to be their concerns need to be kind of addressed to ensure that that they're happy and confident to do that i think yeah, and that's look. I couldn't put a better. You know, pe people want to get back active, um, be that young people or even even people, uh, Jamie, myself, and Colin's age. Um, you know, so everyone wants to get back, and it's understanding what they want out of it and and what their concerns are. It's it's you know an excellent point. But folks, just for for those that that haven't seen the survey yet or or had an opportunity to send to their players, Orla has added the link. Um, into the published questions area of today's webinar. We would encourage you, you know, if you're of appropriate age to fill it in, but also to make sure it gets to your players. Um, everything we're trying to do now is, is data-driven, understanding the people that we are trying to service and, and, and make sure that they come back. So we want to get as much information as possible on that. Um, look, I, I'm going to come to, to Jamie for the next question. Uh, just we have a question coming in on um, the age grade and competitions format um, and, and whether we are looking to kind of change any of those structures uh, now moving into the next season. So I just said uh, I, I'll throw that one to yourself. Thanks, Colm, for that. And, and it is, it's a really interesting question and I don't think there is a, a very clear answer to it because we're dealing with a situation that we're, we're not, we've never seen before. We, we have players now and, and coaches that haven't been involved really in training and games for upwards of a year. And I think you're know, based on, on the webinars that have gone before, the idea of catch up is something that we shouldn't be chasing. That idea of reintroducing our players, A to the social aspect, but B that chance to be, be in an environment with their peers is really important. So how we go about that is a, is a chance to, to innovate to a degree where we keep those groups together for a period of time over the next you know, number of months, whether that be six to 12, but understand the importance that we need to put on those players being able to reconnect, A, with each other, but, 
but equally with the game and a chance to experience the game again where you know, there's not the pressure to compete per se. Your competitions aren't adding an extra layer of pressure in there that we're allowing them to get themselves back into that space and, and deal with the, the social aspects, the physical aspects, and then look more at that competitive element of it. So um, I don't think there's a clear cut answer on what the age grade should be, but I think consideration should be put in there to ensure that the well-being of the players and, and all of those people involved in the game is, is at the forefront of whatever decision is made. Brilliant. Thanks a million, Jamie. No, look, and, and, and I think it is a, it's a multi-layered question within that and, and it's not going to be one size fits all, but I suppose it's once we're mindful of it, um, it it's how we address that. Um, just, I suppose, that question leading on then, uh, so we'll come to yourself, Colin, on, on this next one. You spoke about, you know, that social interaction, that connectivity and, and the coach adaptivity. You know, what are some of the things that a coach could be doing to stay relevant and, you know, if you're a coach and you go in, you get the, the shepherd's crook to come in and, and help out with the minis at six, you're still still there at 16, 17. What are some of the things you can be doing to go and stay relevant and, and with the needs of your players? Yeah, no, good, good question again. Um, I think to becoming relevant is, it's, 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 it's the whole club uh, ethos for me in terms of, um, starting at, at uh, obviously having a rugby committee, having a director of rugby, uh, mini and youth coordinator, um, and having a very good global understanding in the club in terms of who they're coaching, what they coach, and, and how they're coaching. And obviously, as we said, as you go, as the player goes through and the coach goes through the different stages, um, and, and in that pathway, uh, the demands and the needs of, of of and characteristics of the game changes. So it's it's important that the club can provide the opportunity for the coach to avail of all our workshops or courses that we go on um, or, or CPD in terms of community of practice, having the chats with, with, each, with, with each other after, after blitzes, after games, all the, all, all the stuff that, again, that's there that they, they can be utilised. Um, and us, again, as development staff being able to signpost uh, coaches working in a certain area and helping them individually as well. But for, for me, um, the big thing at the moment, and what I can see, there's a great opportunity in terms of clubs having unique selling points, um, in terms of facilities, great coaching, um, a great culture. So for me, a great culture, again, is understanding of how we do things around here, in terms of the respect, the values we talk about rugby, um, that's been ingrained in the past, that the baton has hand, been handed down to us to keep, to keep the flame, uh, not the, the, the torch flame, keep, keep, keep that moving in the right direction, and then being able to hand a legacy over to the next generation coming through. A lot of players, when they retire and they want to start doing a bit of coaching, is again, in terms of they usually try and start coaching on how they were coached. So again, if we can keep our coaches updated and challenged and having that, um, having those great weapons to be able to keep, keep, keep the challenge for the player, but keep it fun, um, and again, to enhance that great culture and great spirit of rugby. So, I hope it's, I hope I hope I've half answered that. Oh no! Look, I answered it much better than I could have. Thankfully, you're on here as the expert, not me. Um, no, look, and and it's it, it really is like some really key themes coming out of it there. You know, and, and one of those is understanding understanding your players, understanding your people, and um, you know it's hugely important. And we spoke about the survey. Um, you know, so we're doing that on that kind of global scale that 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 colleague spoke about. But we need to make sure that we understand the needs of our people in our club um, and and in the surrounding areas. And why do people, you know, attend our club? Why do people choose not to attend our club? You know, how many of us follow up and have that discussion with a player who's decided they're not going to go and continue playing the sport, or they're not going to go and continue playing the sport with our club? Um, so it, it is, it's hugely important that we understand our players and have those conversations. As Jamie spoke about, you know, having an identified person whose role it is to go and have those conversations or put those structures in place. Um, as Colin said, the, the, the rugby committee and, and having a whole club ethos within that. Um, and, and, you know, Molly was speaking about there, we need to understand our young people, but we need to understand the impact of COVID on it. And what are the, the kind of clutch points that people are going to have and, and the 
the issues and the nerves that they're going to have in this current time as well. Uh, folks, thanks a million. And for further details on next week's webinar, please log on to www.irishrugby.ie. Thanks.